I wonder how many of you guys can relate to this. <laughs> Hyperthyroidism is when you make too much thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones are T3 and T4. And what these do is control your metabolism. Now, normally these are made in the thyroid gland, which is in the neck. Now, the most common form of hyperthyroidism is something called Graves' disease. This is when your own immune system attacks your thyroid gland, causing an overproduction in T3 and T4. The main person that's going to get this is anyone that has a low iodine diet. Iodine is used by the thyroid to stay healthy. The main people that are going to have iodine deficiencies are those in developing countries. In the U.S., we have something called iodized salt, which prevents hyperthyroidism in a lot of individuals. Other than low iodine, the other risk factors include being a woman whose parents had hyperthyroidism who also smokes. Now, I already mentioned some of the labs. I mentioned there was an elevated T3 and T4, which controls metabolism. But there's also a decrease in TSH. TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And this is always going to be opposite of T3, T4. If T3 and T4 is up, TSH will be down. What TSH does is exactly what the name is. It's thyroid stimulating hormone. That means when it notices that T3 and T4 are low, TSH will go up and it'll stimulate the production of more T3 and T4. But when T3 and T4 are high, like in hyperthyroidism, then there's no need for more T3 and T4 and TSH will be low. The last labs I want to mention is LDL and cholesterol, and these go down because T3 and T4 are up. Think about it. What does T3 and T4 control? Metabolism. So if your metabolism is high, then your cholesterol is going to be low. We can also apply that metabolism rule to the signs and symptoms. You want to think of hyperthyroidism as a patient always exercising. So think about how someone looks when they're always exercising. They're hot. They're sweaty. Their heart rate goes up, their blood pressure grows up, their face starts to flush, their skin gets moist, and they lose weight. The patient can also have insomnia because they have so much energy and they never stop. They also have muscle wasting and osteoporosis. If they're always exercising, their muscles never get time to rest and never get time to build, so they waste away. The Same thing with the bone. They never get time to rest, so they become brittle. The patient is also always hungry and always pooping, so their appetite is always up. Their bowels are always moving, so peristalsis. They have an increase in bowel sounds when you auscultate them, and they have diarrhea. There's also some changes to the body that happen. Something called exothalmos happens, and it's when their eyeballs start popping out. This is because of fatty deposits behind the eye and edema. Now, what you want to do for these patients is make sure you put eye drops, because their eyes are going to be very dry. Sometimes eye drops are referred to as ophthalmic solutions. You also want to raise the head of the bed, tape the eyelids shut at night so they can sleep, tell the patient to wear dark sunglasses, and reduce their sodium intake. Another change that happens in the body is something called a goiter. This is just another word for saying enlarged thyroid. It becomes so enlarged you can actually see it through the neck. You can also hear a brewy. This is a sound that you hear when you auscultate the patient's thyroid, and it happens because of the increase in blood flow going to the enlarged thyroid gland. If you're going to palpate the thyroid, Make sure you gently palpate it by standing behind the patient and asking them to swallow. The last thing that happens to the body is something called acropaki, and this is essentially clubbing out the fingers. Now what you want to do for these patients is keep them calm. One of the things that you can do is cool down the room, keep it quiet, and if it all fails, give them sedatives to calm down. You also want to avoid stimulants that like amphetamine or caffeine, so no coffee, no tea. And then you want to make sure you give them high calorie meals. The signs and symptoms were they're always exercising. So if they're always exercising, they're always expending energy and they need high calories. There's a very serious complication that comes with hyperthyroidism. It's called a thyroid storm. It's also called a thyroid crisis and it's also called thyrotoxicosis. This is an emergency and it often gets triggered by infection, surgery, or trauma. The symptoms are going to be essentially the same as hyperthyroidism, but worse. Very severe hypertension, very severe tachycardia above 130, and very severe fevers. Now, the treatment for thyroid storm is to decrease the thyroid hormones. 
And how we do that is with antithyroid drugs and iodine. The first antithyroid drug is going to be something called propothiouracil, or PTU. This drug has a very rare but serious side effect in which it reduces the number of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So your patient's at risk for infection and bleeding. So if your patient reports a fever and sore throat, make sure you report this to the doctor. Another antithyroid drug can be methamazole. Iodine, which has other names such as SSKI, which stands for Saturated Solution of Potassium Iodide, or Lugol Solution, is also used to lower thyroid hormones. It's usually used in combination with the antithyroid drugs, and in large doses, it will reduce the hormones. Make sure the patient takes this after meals with juice. Beta blockers can also be given, like propanolol, to lower the sympathetic nervous system response, which lowers the heart rate and lowers the blood pressure. We also give the patient acetaminophen and cooling blankets to reduce the fever. Now, the best treatment for hyperthyroidism is something called radioactive iodine therapy. But before this is given, you have to make sure the patient is not pregnant because this is radioactivity placed in the iodine that the patient takes. So you need to make sure the patient isn't pregnant and test for HCG. What will happen is the patient will take the radioactive iodine. The thyroid will absorb the iodine that's radioactive and it will destroy the thyroid tissue. This takes about three months to work and it leads to hypothyroidism. The side effect for radioactive iodine therapy is going to be radioactivity. So you got to make sure you teach the patient to separate themselves from everyone, especially children and pregnancy, because the radioactivity will stop rapidly dividing cells and children and pregnant people are rapidly dividing cells. Now, what I mean by separate everything means they have to use separate bathrooms, separate utensils, separate everything. They can't share anything with anyone else because they're radioactive. Now, there's also a surgical intervention that can be done for patients with hyperthyroidism. It's called a thyroidectomy, and it's when they cut out the thyroid. This is often done if the goiter is too large, the drugs aren't working, or if they have thyroid cancer. This will rapidly reduce the amount of T3 and T4 and cause hypothyroidism. Most commonly, they'll do a subtotal thyroidectomy. This means they'll remove 90% of the thyroid and they'll leave 10% in hopes that some T3 and T4 will still be active. Now, before the surgery, you want to make sure you give antithyroid drugs, iodine, and beta blockers. This is to prevent a thyroid storm. Even the thyroidectomy surgery can cause a thyroid storm. In post-op, you want to watch out for something called laryngeal strider, which is an emergency. Now, let me explain how that happens. The thyroid and the parathyroid are together. Now, if you remove the thyroid gland with a thyroidectomy, you're also going to remove the parathyroid gland, which controls calcium. If you remove the parathyroid gland, then you can't control calcium anymore and it leads to hypocalcemia. Now, you need to know the signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia, and this includes something called trozoos and chervostex. Now, trozoos is when you inflate a blood pressure cuff and then the patient's hand starts to spasm up. And Chavostex is when you tap the patient's cheek, a little bit in front of the patient's ear, and then their face spasms. The last sign and symptom of hypocalcemia is tetany, which is spasms. Now, there's a specific type of spasm that we're worried about. We don't really care about spasms in the hands or feet. We care about spasms near the airway, something called a laryngeal spasm. This is a spasm of the larynx, and this leads to the airway closing which is gonna make a harsh vibrating sound called strider. Now this is an emergency. The patient can't breathe because of the spasm in their airway. So what you wanna do is give something called calcium gluconate. It's caused by hypocalcemia, so give them calcium to stop it. You also wanna have an emergency trach set at the bedside in case the doctor has to put a trach in. To prevent this from happening, put the patient's semifollers, tell them not to flex or bend their neck, monitor vital signs, and calcium levels every two hours. All right, guys, that's everything you need for hyperthyroidism.